In previous video lecture, we had a conceptual introduction to fatigue failure. Here we will learn fatigue in a more practical, engineering way. Endurance strength of a material is determined by a test called RRM or rotating beam test. Here a highly polished, homogeneous test specimen is made to fail due to fatigue. As the specimen rotates, load acting on the specimen induces fluctuating bending stress. Load on specimen is reduced gradually so that a condition is reached where specimen never breaks. Corresponding bending stress amplitude induced will be the endurance limit of material. But endurance limit so obtained will be so unrealistic for practical uses. Because here we are using a highly polished, homogeneous, and zero surface defect specimen. In actual case there can be scratches and surface defects on metal surface. There could be discontinuities like this. All these factors will make the specimen fail, much before the ideal endurance limit value obtained from RR more test. This is why endurance limit is not a property of material, like tensile strength or shear strength. It depends upon a lot of other factors. So, we will try to obtain a realistic endurance limit value, by incorporating all these parameters. Effect of these parameters are represented as factors, with values less than 1. First, effect of scratches on surface of material. Poor surface finish will initiate growth of micro cracks. This reduces endurance limit value by a large amount. Surface finish factor Ka is used to represent this effect. Surface finish of material largely depend upon way it is manufactured, and strength of the material. So we can obtain value of Ka, as a function of manufacturing method and, tensile strength. Now, effect of surface defects. As size of the workpiece increases, surface area increases. More the surface area, more the surface defects. So this factor is also known as, size factor. It can be found as function of diameter. Next, a factor to improve reliability of design for fatigue, KC. Fatigue test has got only 50% reliability. So, if we decrease endurance limit further, we can say with more reliability that material will not fail. This factor is used for that purpose, for a specified reliability. If we choose KC as 1, then resulting endurance strength has got only 50% reliability. The final factor, due to effect of discontinuity in the material. Discontinuities in the material increase stress. Or, it causes stress concentration. Thus reduces endurance limit value. A factor KD is used to capture this effect. Comprising all these effects together, a realistic endurance value will be as follows. This is a safe stress amplitude. If stress is completely reversible, or when stress mean value is zero. But for the case shown, as we discussed in first video lecture we have to use a Goodman diagram. But practice shows that Goodman diagram deviate much when stress amplitude near zero. It almost tends to yield stress value. So it will be logical to modify Goodman diagram like this. By connecting yield stress values in abscissa and ordinate. Up to the intersection yield line follows, and after that Goodman line follows. This is known as modified Goodman diagram. Thank you for watching the video.